Hey everyone, I am Jason Ward from MakingStarWars.net, and if you were at the old link earlier, sorry, I had to make a new one because I had some computer problems, but now I solved it, and we're on this one, so just deal with it, and uh, you can't see old Rob today because he's hiding, uh, just don't ask questions, he's, he's really deformed, I'm in the a -hole. we're not talking about it. He's in the, I'm in he's, the a hole. Right? I'm hiding in the a hole. Whatever that means. It's a, <laughs> a hole in the floor. It's a, it's a hole in the floor. I swear. <laughs> he's under the couch. Yeah. And then, and then, as always, we got Max on Monday, and then we got Roll. We are our. our um, we got our, our buddy, and then we got Ma Ma Max Gar Garcia. Ma yeah, I do. I'm. A, I feel like I'm. Just, I'm just gonna get mush about the Maximiliano. Yeah, it's all good. It's yeah, great. No, it's good. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, this so, is an easier way to say it. Boy Max, Girl Max. Boy Max. Girl Max. Ah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I'll just say the Maxes, and then you guys could both talk yeah. at the same time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then if it doesn't pertain to you, then just don't say anything. So, what was it like being an extra, being a a featured actor, featured extra in a Star Wars thing? Not you, Max. Other Max. <laughs> No, so well, I, let me. I'm no, just kidding. No, no, yeah. so, no. I, I, I would no. Um, really, really quickly. Uh, I, I need to throw the images up so I could, I could show who you were, in, in yeah. that really, really awesome uh, scene with the uh, huts and and that that black Wookie and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, uh, so, so tell tell us a little bit about how you how you got into like star wars because that's everybody's dream there's nobody here right now watching this or who who isn't on this panel at least who hasn't thought right. how do i do this how do i make it happen and have the okay. fantasy because you did yeah. it you did so, it for, that's amazing for sure for sure for sure yeah yeah absolutely uh a huge star wars fan um uh, my cousin has always loved star wars i've always loved star wars i think it's a huge story about you know, uh, conquering adversity. It, it, I think it, it translates to family too in so many ways. Um, how I got into it. So I've been out here now in Hollywood now seven years um, from Texas. Uh, I work. I work for a third party uh, casting group. It's called Central Casting. It's it's very easy to look up on online. Um, they've been well known. They're basically a third party group. They cast extras in tv shows and movies and they've been doing it probably for like 60 years now so like they own 80 percent of the work um uh basically that, that does extras in tv shows and big huge movies um so one, I one second and, one second I, yeah. I just thought that was a goofy line when people on like on the internet go oh they're gonna pull them from central casting i thought that was just like a general term that that's a real place okay Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's real. Funny. I did not know that. I thought that was just a Hello, phrase. are you still there? I just yeah. Make sure. yeah. Yeah. I'm still you guys still see me, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Looking yeah, good. Looking sure, good. Yeah, because I got yeah. a phone call and then like I tried to like ignore it. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> no worries. So so yeah, no, it's not. It's it's not. It's not a goofy thing. It's real. Central casting is completely real. Um, that is a real company. They've been doing it for like sixty, I think maybe seventy five years, if I'm not if I'm Incorrect. They've been doing it a long time, and basically, they're a background service that has a archive and just a file system of all different types of people. And these shows and movies will put up a prerequisite as to what they're looking for, right? So, like, I want this tall of person, I want this ethnicity, I want them to have this look and this kind of hair, and then based off of those things, um, it's Central's casting's job. They have like small casting directors, if you will. It's their job to basically get what the show needs. So it's at it, it can kind of be at random, but at the same time, depending on what your look is, if the show is looking for your look, they start to look for those things, you know. Um, and yeah, I just got it. I got it. Uh -oh. Well, we lost him. We lost him that time. Yeah. So on a on a side note that totally pertains is that it like. In the in the UK, people always ask me like, you know, how do I do it? And like, one of the ways that you do it is um, to go over to um, Casting Collective. I don't Casting... know what happened there. I was just talking. I was just talking, and they like kicked me off or something. Yeah. Central Casting where, shut where them was up. I when I left, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know. I think that was Disney. I think the <laughs> first rule of Central Casting is you never admit it's real. 
That's, I, yeah, knew yeah, exactly. I knew it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So central casting is a real thing. It's 100 percent real. Um, they've been in business for like 75 years. Um, and anybody that's trying to get into the business of acting um, has probably heard of it or some way somehow been in it uh, at some point in their career. So basically, it's just a huge third party group that provides bodies, if you will, like bodies. So these movies and these shows, they put out prerequisites for what they're looking for. You know, like we want this height, we want this type of hairstyle, we want this ethnicity, we want they, they put out all these prerequisites and it's central casting his job to basically look through their system of profiles of people that they have pictures of and meet those prerequisites. So it's kind of just by like at chance that you kind of get, get picked to do certain shows. So um, this, this one specific show here, this one specific show that asked me like, hey, are you available for this show? And they hadn't told me, they usually keep these big, big shows like under wraps, like their names. So they told me like a code name. They were just like, oh, here's a code name. Like, can you do this show? And to me, it was just another job. It was just like another job. Like, oh, I can't do that. Sh I can't do that because I'm booked on another show on that same day. And um, for some reason or another, the casting director that I was speaking to was just so adamant that I had to do this show. She was just like <laughs> so adamant, like almost to the point where like, I felt like I might've gotten reprimanded had I turned it down, but also it was just like a, uh, a feeling of like, you have to do this show, please do this show. And I was just like, listen, I can't, I'm already doing another show. I think I was doing like the Big Bang Theory at the time, the Big Bang Theory or something. I was like, I'm already on this show, so I can't do this. And she was like, no, like, she was like, you have to do this. And I was like, okay, listen, the only way I can do this show is if you like uh, turn the scheduling around for getting a test. Cause during the time of this show, as with most shows right now currently, you have to get a coronavirus test because they want to make sure that nobody gets infected and that everybody is tested and nobody has COVID on set. Because if you, if you, if somebody has COVID, they can risk shutting down the whole set, which is arguably millions of dollars. And then we have to start, you know, planning for another day of shooting, right? Directors, DPs, like sliding grip, you know, nobody wants to get that. So that would cost them more money in the long run. So basically I was like, the only way I can do this show is if you send me like a concierge to get a coronavirus test. Like if you send somebody to where I'm at, right? Like at this day and they test me, then I'll do it because I'm busy that day and I can't get out of work to go to that test. And she was like, let me call you back in like two hours. And I was like, okay, sure, no problem. And I just thought nothing of it, you know, because in Hollywood, a lot of the times when you talk to casting or when you're an actor, you want to forget things because you don't want to dwell on them. You don't want to dwell and say, oh, well, I wonder what happened or, what, what's going to happen here? Like, you can just go crazy thinking about all the scenarios that could they possibly like happen. They like me. They really like me. No, they right. hate me. What I, why I say that? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I just went back to work and like two hours later, she called me and I answered the phone. I was like, yes. And she was like, hey, um, we're going to send you a concierge service right now because we need to get your test and make sure that you're negative and put you on this show. And I was like, okay, whatever. So basically they sent me a concierge service. They swabbed my nose. They like swabbed my mouth. They made sure I was negative. Um, so from that point on, uh, they, w they made sure that I was negative first. And then once they were absolutely sure I was negative, they were like, okay, you're booked on this show. They still hadn't told me what the show was. They're just like, you're on this show. You're going to have to go to this place at this time to basically go get wardrobe. And wardrobe is they start putting a wardrobe on you so that you fit the world, right? If you will, you fit the 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 world that you're in right? right um so basically you know i went that day of and you know i was just casually hanging out like oh it's another job you know I, i've been on plenty shows any show you can probably name i've been on i've done background work on um you know the big bang theory uh the rock uh you know uh huge movies like anything i've, I've done background so i'm just casually there and like all of a sudden from like five to ten minutes that I'm there casually like these people approach me and like as what I could say is like the secret service like men in black style <laughs> and they have like these suits on and like they just give me like this this uh like this third degree like hey this show is very serious if you agree to do this show we're gonna be taking your cell phones we're gonna lock them away every day that you're on set um basically you know you, you you'll have to do what we say you can't you you can't do you can't put anything on social media you can't you can't talk about it outside of work you know you have to be there and be attentive and just show up on time and, and be there when we tell you just 
the ninth, the, the third degree of just like so laying down the hammer, and I was just like, kind of <laughs> like, whoa, what? I'm just the background actor, like, yo, man, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're all, are we faking a new moon landing? What's yeah, going like, on here? No. <laughs> yeah, what am I doing here? What's going on, man? Like, what did I sign up for? Like, I don't know what this is. So yeah. I just agree to it. I agree to it because I'm so excited by like them just hyping up like this show, that show. So immediately after I agree to it verbally, they give me a contract and the contract is just an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. And basically at the top of that contract, it says Star Wars, a George Lucas production. Oh um, this is G Disney Productions. And I'm just like, oh, oh I'm just God. like blown away because <laughs> at that point, you know, um, you know, I'm just like huge taken back. Just like, hey, this is like, this I me and my cousin have talked about this so many times and now here I am so I signed that contract they put me into wardrobe immediately they start you know wardrobing me for about an hour or two and then from from one day to the next I'm on this show now so can, yeah. can we can, can we what, what what was the uh for for Star Wars what was the process like with, with the wardrobe stuff were they just were they just throwing on random things on you and, and seeing what what stuck? I mean, what like yeah. So what so basically, they they throw on random things that they think that are already in. The, they already have like a wardrobe, right? They have like a wardrobe, but they come and take things and they add and subtract things depending on what they ha what the stylist likes, right? So they have like a head stylist, and then depending on if things fit me or not, they tell them, well, this is going to have to go to to a tailor because we want this to fit him a certain way we want it to be loose so like the picture that you're putting there they wanted certain clothes to be loose on me so they're like oh we don't want it to be so fit form fitting to him we want it to be loose like he's like a scavenger or like he is in this in this town you know so yeah so wardrobe probably took about two hours you know and, and just they have maybe a chain of that comes in like from one to like four four people stylists come in and give their approval like yes i like this or no i don't like that so it probably took two hours because they didn't like certain things and then they they did like certain things i think the hat at the very end they were like oh put this hat on him and uh yeah so so that, that was your, your cousin show. eddie like i remember when we watched it i was like it's cousin Ed? that's oh, i love the yeah, yeah yeah did, yeah exactly. did they ever wheelbarrow in the si the 70 sideburns you know like <laughs> did they just have like a whole room of just 70 so they could try on the, the different sideburns like no, but I will like the, say that the Gary um, so, so so they didn't have the sideburns in the seventy sideburns, but I will say that um, I had my braids in right. So I usually have braids, which are my day to day. This is my style right here, and I wasn't sure that my braids would fit in the Star Wars world, and that's why, like in some of these first scenes, you see a hat on me. I showed up, and um, uh, I think again, you have so many chain of command. So there's there's wardrobe, there's makeup, there's there's stylist for hair. So the stylist for hair comes and sees me and she was like, uh, hey, where are your braids? And I was like, well, I wasn't sure that those fit in this world. So I didn't want to get reprimanded. So I took them out to, and I just had my long hair. And she just got, I wouldn't say upset, but she was disappointed. She was like, no, I, I specifically requested your braids. Like I specifically told the person at Central Casting that oh, you show shit. up with your braids. Like I think your braids fit in this world. And I love your braids because it's, yeah, such, wow. a unique, it's such a unique look. You know, so she was just like, I really, next time, she basically told me, don't ever show up again without your braids. And yeah. I was like, okay, I'll never show up again without my braids. But <laughs> oh my I mean, God. again, I just wanted to make sure that the production was okay with that and that fit into like the Star Wars universe, right? And she was like, no, it absolutely does. So from that point on, I would just always come with braids. So in later episodes, you could or could not see me if I make it into the final edit with braids, you know, with braids, <laughs> you'll see me in other scenes. Yeah, with braids. In, in, yeah. A, in, a, in a total co coincidence, when, when we were going over the episode, we were like breaking down and we were like we were like doing screenshots of every every shot that was neat. And we pulled up one of these ones right here. And I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, I'm like, look at this guy. I'm all, he gets to wear like the uh, poncho and this guy has to wear a spaghetti strainer on his head. It's like, you want to look really cool in Star Wars or you're going to get made fun of and beat up on the playground. And I'm like, right, right. <laughs> it was, yeah. it was so like, in, in, a, in, in a, you know, you got the uh, like Rogue One Elmer Fudd hat, which is, which is actually like, like pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, and so, so, yeah, so, no, when you, so, so, so was, was the uh, hat all about the braids not being in? Is that, is that why the hat, why you got yeah, the hat? Yeah, so I think like that was one of the first days originally. That was one of the first days. And I think the, the hairstylist hadn't come to see me. So I think the, I guess the underling or like the assistant to the hairstylist, she wasn't sure whether to give her approval on my braids or not. So she was like, just wear this hat. So I wore that hat for like 
maybe the first three days of shooting. And then after that, the I think I took I took my braids out because that was covering the braids originally. And I just took my braids out because I was like, oh, maybe it's just easier for them to go without my braids. Yeah. So then I come back like maybe after three or four days after shooting and like the head of of hair, right? Because that's what I'm saying. They have, they're working on so many different characters. You know, they have so many different hairstylists, makeup stylists, everything. But the head of hair comes and is like, uh, don't you have braids? And I'm like, yes, I do. But like your other stylist basically put a hat on me and like, I just took my braids out because I just thought it would be more, uh, you know, I think it, I thought it would conform more to like the Star Wars universe. And she was just, like I said, just very disappointed. She was like, not like disappointed as in like I'm reprimanded, but she was just like, please bring your braids back. Like yeah. I want you in your braids. And I was right. like, okay, all right, next time I'll bring my braids. And then from that point out, I just always wore my braids. I, I was I was down at at that set on when when that set was up over yeah, yeah. the not Manhattan Beach but over by like the El Segundo little exterior location. Okay, yes. Okay, so you know where it is. Yes, that's yeah. where, that is exactly where it's at. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I I'm I'm I was the guy up in the parking structure looking down at you and you're going <laughs> get the fuck out of here. That was me. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh yeah no but, but so anyways but that was like that was like in the the still really like scary thick of co the first like covid wave right yeah that was yeah like, yeah absolutely like absolutely. we don't know what's happening and stuff like that yeah what was there was it was it freaky for you or were you just like uh this is star wars i'm just gonna like look past it like 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 what was it was it was there like i know this is a weird question but was <clears throat> it stressful working at that time considering yeah yeah it was definitely working uh, stressful working at that time. I mean, this is Star Wars. I feel like, hey, I really want to be a part of this production. Um, Robert I, Robert Rodriguez and John Favreau were like five feet in front of me, like five feet. Like yeah. I could, I like, I could, you know, like I could. Oh my god! I just like even now recanting it is just like they were right in front of me. I mean, Robert Rodriguez has always been a huge inspiration for me. John Favreau, obviously huge. Um, but yeah, to, to your question, uh, it was difficult, but they test us. Even now, right now, in current times right now, they test us three times before we ever go to set. They test us three times. So three yeah. individual times. They will make sure, absolutely sure, that we do not have COVID, that we're COVID negative. And then once we get there, we're required to wear the mask until we're shooting. And then when we're shooting, we take the mask off. Um, they always maintain a six-feet distance between us. They're, they have COVID officers on set. Um, it's become a whole it's, – it's almost – it's a whole new, like – job now they have COVID officers on set to make sure that we're always six feet apart um that you know we're, we're, we're hand sanitizing we're, we're we're hygienic all those things um yeah so so it was a little stressful but at the same time it was very exciting to be on star wars set and then they treat us absolutely good you know they treat us really well i mean we're, we're eating catering food like gourmet breakfast gourmet like lunch and dinner like i'm eating steak and lobster and i'm like yeah you know i'm on star wars and I'm just like, believe it or not you time. can smell it up in the structure sometimes yeah. they're like oh man they're they're making jambalaya or something and it smells really <laughs> yeah. good <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like they make really good food so it's like they have catering right there on set so yeah. so yeah it was really exciting um you know, uh, just to be a part of anything Star Wars um, is always exciting. You know, I just remember being uh, getting up there at 6 a.m. in the morning and they would put us in wardrobe and they put us in makeup and they make sure we're great. And then they would give us this huge like black cloak because they would basically transport us probably from that from that from that structure I, that you're talking about. I have seen set. those black cloaks so, more than you could imagine. More than I've ever yeah, seen a Star so, Wars costume at this point. Yeah, so so that's that's <laughs> you're the reason why they got the black cloaks. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. Like I'm they sorry. want to make sure that like nobody sees anything and like you can't even spot yeah. us and tell what characters we are, like what it's for. So they it's almost like being held like you know, I, the best way I can describe it is like, you know, in the movie where like they kidnap you and they put a, the mask over you and they're like, oh, we're going to take you to, <laughs> to a destination where like, we don't want you to see. So basically they would do that to us and then we'd get to the destination and they'd be like, okay, get off now. And we'd get off and we'd get, like take off our, dis our robe and now we're in our character costumes. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, you know, we're on the set, you know, black croissants right in front of me, um, Boba Fett's right in front of me, um, you know the uh robin rodriguez is right in front of me you know john fabro and it's just like amazing to be there you know um the first three or four days i couldn't tell if robert rodriguez was him because he was wearing a mask and i can he has a very distinct look he wears like this cap all the time and a leather jacket so it's like that's always like yeah and he's kind of look. ripped <laughs> yeah and he's tall he's like six three or something he's got he's tall so i was like man 
I, I'm pretty sure that's 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 Robert Rodriguez. I'm pretty sure, and and I wasn't sure that was him. And there was times where like I could have spoken to him like in common passing, but I was scared because I was like, well, I don't want to embarrass myself if that's not Robert Rodriguez, you know. And then one day I think I saw him take his mask off, and I was like, that is Robert Rodriguez. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Oh, that is Robert Rodriguez. And like, it just, it just set me off to be like, that's Robert Rodriguez. And, and, and I was just, I was shocked and appalled kind of to understand that, you know, when, when you do background work and extra work, there's so many actors that, you know, sometimes they're not, they're not really pursuing uh, 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 the business. They're really just going to school or, you know, they're just trying to make some money or they want to see how, how Hollywood works. But my point that I'm making is I was just astounded by how many people didn't know who Robert Rodriguez was. They were really? like, I don't, who's Robert Rodriguez? And I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? Have you not seen uh, Desperado? Like, Come on. You know what I'm saying? Desperado from Dust Till Dawn, Spy Kids 1 through 3, um, <laughs> just a ton of stuff. Sin City, um, you know, this Star Wars thing, like Desperado Once Upon a Time in Mexico. I'm like, are you, and they're like, yeah. oh yeah, I know that movie. Oh yeah, I know that movie. I know that movie. I'm like, yeah, that's Robert Rodriguez. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> So they never uh, mention predators. They never yeah, mention. predator, predator. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, and then being it. from Texas, you know, but I understand I'm a little biased because I'm from Texas. Robert Rodriguez is from Texas. He's a Chicano. I'm a Chicano, uh, Mexican American. So like, yeah, he means so much to me. And then just seeing John Fabro um, too, as well. You know, the way they give direction, the way they come out. Um, it's just to me, I'm soaking it up like a sponge. This is like everything I've always wanted to do. Um, and then to be on a Star Wars show, you know, um, yeah, a lot of the times I, I, I lose myself in the fact that I'm doing a uh, background as a job. And, and, you know, when my cousin spotted me on, uh, it's kind of, well, it's, 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 it's well, a little just so for me now. Yeah, go Just ahead. so everyone knows, Roel is um, Max's cousin. Oh, did I not say yeah. that? I'm sorry. No. I, I got, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no I, I, I did want to get to that part. I wanted to get to yeah. too. So yeah. when you when you get the role, you don't tell Roel. You 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 keep it. No, on the, on yeah, the, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't tell Roel. How pissed off are you right now, Roel? <laughs> how how seething inside? No, no. What were, 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 were you like? Were you like you son of a bitch? Well, there were a lot of emotions. Uh, I'm not <laughs> mad at him for not telling me, so I could have that experience. Yeah, he, um, he couldn't tell you. He couldn't tell you. He yeah, was yeah. NBA, right? I also, I also don't want him to jeopardize sort of the future. I mean, I would love for him to get a speaking role. You know, how cool would that be for all of you know? As you had mentioned, any fan would love to see themselves in Star Wars, and uh, the second best thing would be <laughs> your cousin, your closest cousin. So, uh, so I'm glad he was able to keep things under wraps and keep it to himself. Um, but uh, yeah, so so I had the experience of seeing him on pop up on my TV back here in Austin, Texas. Tell them, tell them basically like your po your post, like how yeah. you found, how you found out. Yeah, well, it kind of. Um, so episode one, I think I waited till after work to watch it. You know, I didn't rush. I didn't watch it in the morning or, or stay up late like I know you guys do. Mm -hmm. um, I waited and something, call it the force, <laughs> uh, told me to uh, watch it that morning. I got up in bed. We have a TV in the, in the bedroom. And I said, you know, let me turn this thing on. My girlfriend was asleep. <laughs> I said, I'm going to wake you up. Sorry. And I turn it on, you know, I'm half watching it, you know, one eye open, one, one eye closed kind of. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think the, the black chrysanthemum scene uh, comes up probably 10, 15 minutes into the show. And, uh, and it, Max's uh, initial appearance happens. And I'm, I had to rewind it, you know, I said, wait a minute. And that kind of looks like Max. And even with the hat, right? I maybe call it a cousin thing. I think I'm pretty good with faces. Um, but I rewound it. So I saw him and then that's when I confirmed it. He was in that picture where he is dead center, uh, a little bit out of focus. The people to his right and to his left are totally in focus. And, and that was the first time I saw Max on, on screen. And then uh, I pressed play after sitting there for a little while. And um, he pops up a few more times, I think, uh, as you put on the screen, mainly in focus when he's wearing that messenger bag and talking to the, uh, the guy with the pot on his head. Um, who knows what they're into? It was sort of the aftermath after the showdown, after the stare down. Uh, they shoot Max again, and I think that's the uh, that might be the uh, the what would I call that? The seeds to a fanfic because I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> um, but Max got some extra screen screen time, and then I think he's also in a passing shot right when the the Hut twins are being 
uh, carried in. So, <laughs> so I made sure after I, I watched the episode to go back and at work, I'm using screenshots to, to pull every um, uh, bit of uh, picture that I can uh, seeing my cousin there on Star Wars. So, so what, what, what was your text to him? I, I, I assume you texted him right after, right? So I actually called him. Okay. So yeah, but you know, I'm in Texas and he's in California. So he's two hours uh, behind okay. and, uh, and I start calling him. And by the way, I think Max at that point was starting to feel a little bit under the weather. He wasn't sure if he had COVID or what. And, and uh, so he sleeps through my call, <laughs> you know, mm. I think he's trying to recover. <laughs> uh, I called him uh, multiple times that morning. He didn't pick up. I just assumed he was asleep. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I don't think I got, and then I called his dad, you know, I called the family uh, to tell them that that's what's gone on. And, uh, you know, I, I waited, by the way, I didn't, um, I didn't really tweet about it. And uh, I didn't even send screenshots to friends yet because uh, I didn't want to spoil uh, Black Chrysanthemum, right? I had to wait a little while because of the content. And so uh, it wasn't until later in the day that I got to talk to Max and then I just start screaming it on the phone, like, you did it, you did it, you know, all those things. <laughs> Uh, you did it in my book. He's made it, you know, my cousin's going to be a big actor one day, but, uh, <laughs> Hey man, I can have a lot of fun with this. So for me, I think it's great. Yeah. No, and, then, yeah. and then that's when I saw, I checked Facebook and I was started reading. I was like in, in between rides and I started reading where I was, uh, Facebook posts and I was like, Oh my God. Oh my god! Oh my god! We have to have him on the show. We have to. I have to tell Jason. So I try to keep it a secret. Um, I didn't want to post anything because that night we were going to do a review of the of chapter three, and so on the show I was going to share that information with um, with you guys and um, and the viewers. But we were really deep in conversation about chapter three, and so we didn't get around to it. And um, then I just asked Jason. I said, "Wouldn't it be great if we just have him on the show and?" have her well and you know we can talk about how this all transpired so yeah. i actually met roel and i met um star wars celebration <coughs> um orlando mm -hmm. and that time then i introduced you to jason as well so y'all know each yeah. other um and then uh you know i found out that roel lived in houston and i live in houston so after celebration we went and had dinner, um, lunch and just you know hung out for a bit and he's a big old star wars nerd i am too and um so in a way it's like i i felt his excitement you know how I, how i would feel if i saw you know a family member or a friend on star wars <clears throat> I, hats off to him because i i couldn't he really has to know his face you know what i mean to see in the background you know um and so i went back and i started looking i started rewatching. i started taking pictures to myself like <laughs> and then um uh, i i was just really excited and then you know i hooked i connected with um max also and learned that he has other movies and stuff like that that he's done and <laughs> i was just like this guy's really talented and i honestly feel that you are going to go somewhere so I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Good luck to you, you know, and thank you. and all of that. Yeah, if you if you were terrible, I we just wouldn't go there. But I, I watched I watched some, some shorts and stuff like that with Max the other night, and uh, even our, our our buddy was like, he really holds his face from from shot to shot well. Like like a lot of people have a hard time with that. He's got it down. So yeah, 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 definitely. So what was it? Was it really hard though? Like not telling your cousin like not going like hey i can't tell you anything about it but i'm in star wars shut up and yeah, just hanging up the phone. yeah it was just extremely hard you know it's like um but yeah it's extremely hard i imagine that i'll probably be in that scenario in the future with other big huge budgets you know <laughs> franchise movies and stuff but yeah it was really hard it's just like once you sign that nda i mean uh, within the business, you know, we talk with, with other friends that are actors within the business, but outside of the business, we don't really talk about it. So it's like, you know, you keep that under the hat, you know, um, because something like Star Wars and, and movies like this, they, they rely so much on their secrecy and like keeping a, a cap on it, you know. And then also, you know, as, a, as an actor, uh, you know, you want to be called back for, for stuff. You want to be trusted by Disney, by Marvel Studios. You know, you want them to be like, yeah, we want him to come back because he knows how to keep the secret, you know. Yeah. 
So, so yeah, it was very, very hard. Um, but I just remember that day when, when my cousin called me and I made a post myself and just like, you know, I'm out here in Hollywood and, and, and you know, to be a huge, iconic mega movie star, of course, is a part of my dreams. And like, you know, to, to make work that speaks, uh, you know, that, that speaks volume and, you know, makes conscious decisions and is thought provoking is, is what I want to do. But but, you know, to get validation from my cousin was just very emotionally uh, grat- gratifying for me. It was just like, man, I, I can't believe that my, my, my cousin paid that much attention. Of course, it's Star Wars. So it's like, man, he was just like, oh, my God. And then, like, I just remember him calling me and just all day he's texting me and telling me. And he's just like, man, do you remember like, you know, 10 years ago, we would talk about this because even 10 years ago, I was talking about being an actor. And he was just like, man, what if you were like in Star Wars? And I was like, yeah, I would love to be in Star Wars. You know? and, <laughs> and now here we are. We've arrived at that point where I am now in Star Wars. You know, regardless if it's a speaking role or not, I'm a part of this universe forever now. Like, and and, and you're, now. you're in a rad like moment with yeah. these like with yeah. two huts and a giant black Wookiee. Like, Absolutely. like that's, that's great. You know what I mean? Like, cause yeah, you, yeah. you could have been like, like, you know, oh, the mayor will see you now or, or, yeah. or just looking at the as he walks into the mayor's yeah. office and said, you're in like the moment on yeah. the show down in the street. And, uh, uh, or I and, could have been in a scene with those, with the, with the speed bikes where you guys demolished the speed bikes last, <laughs> last episode I watched when you guys saw all these speed bikes are horrible. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, 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 I don't hate them. When they were feeling all that, I was, I was there when they were feeling all that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, Max, so real quick, yeah. <laughs> this is I'm being joking but yeah. did you see the huts like being carried so the huts they're so like they're di- I saw them being carried but they're mm-hmm. digitally they're digitally put in there CGI yeah, yeah, style yeah. so like mm-hmm. basically when they are being carried like all this all like the servants that are carrying him like on his big like uh throne that's yeah. real all that's real but like when they were CGI they were CGI through like a cutout like a cardboard cutout and there's like it's a cardboard cutout and basically the actor has to act with that cardboard cutout essentially and then wow. later on when they edit it they edit the huts in there you know wow nice. yeah um, <laughs> Ro- and and also too um <clears throat> Roel, can you talk about the instagram post that you had um posted like a couple of years ago ask uh, tagging Ro- robert Rod- rodriguez oh well i think just in general um Max and I were both excited when we heard that Robert Rodriguez was going to get tapped to do Boba Fett um, after, you know, taking on an episode in The Mandalorian. Um, I thought he did a good job in that. Um, again, I had, you know, we grew up watching his films. You know, our, our I remember my dad coming home from uh, from Desperado and El Mariachi, um, you know, the, the original one that he did as a film student uh, on a budget of like $13,000. Um, and so, you know, he's just somebody that we grew up with and, and I've admired. Um, and so him getting tapped was a big deal. And I said, well, you know, who better of a director to sort of maybe give Max a break, right? I, Max is, has family from San Antonio. We grew up yeah. in Texas, um, you know, both Chicano in culture. Um, and and Robert Rodriguez happens to be aligning with Star Wars. And out of selfish reasons, you know, that would be great if something aligned there. And so from time to time, I'll dabble with the power of social media and just tweet something, you know, not like I have a lot of followers or, or Instagram followers, but I've got a few and uh, you never know who's going to see it. Right. And I think that even, uh, you know, this gracious welcome that, that making Star Wars has given Max to come on here. And, and again, through our friendship, uh, uh, girl Max, um, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible how this works. And so sometimes, so I did, so I just posted something to Instagram tagging Robert Rodriguez, um, uh, you know, a while ago. And, uh, and here we are today. So, <laughs> yeah. And well, well, while Max clearly works his butt off, like in, in the industry, getting like gigs and stuff like that and totally earned it. Uh, there's something to be said about the old manifesting it. I, I'm going to give you a little bit, a little tiny bit of credit there too. <laughs> absolutely. 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 Yeah. You manifested that steak and lobster, my friend. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. yeah. And the junior prom like six inch rule. I, I'm like, yeah. this is like the best version of junior prom I've ever heard of. There's star Wars and steak and lobster, but you still can't get close to a, to anybody, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's yeah. real Jason, you know, that Max and I, I think the, the, um, the most magical part of all this is, isn't the posting it on social media and then, then things happening because that tends to happen. But it's the sitting there with your cousin 
uh, I think we were maybe on a trip somewhere, um, you know, sitting there talking through, you know, he's my little cousin and he's talking about wanting to be an actor, you know, yeah. wanting to go to Hollywood. And as you know, I'm like a dad figure at times, yeah. uh, you know, like, Hey, are you sure that's the route you want to go? You know, there's college, there's all these other things that you could be doing. And, um, and he was adamant about it. And so, um, so we would, I would daydream with him and, and we would think about that. Like, what would you, and he would ask me, what would you do if I ever got in Star Wars? And I said, well, man, you would, for one, you'd have made it my book. Like, that's it. That's, it's cool enough for me and, uh, to, to have accomplished that. And then, and then, uh, and then I told him I was going to, uh, get a Star Wars figure made of him because I got a massive action figure collection and, you know, I'm collecting TVC right now. That's the stuff that's dropping. Um, and I'm out there looking for a customizer currently because I have to follow through on that promise. <laughs> yeah. So, so if we have somebody in the viewers that are. Yeah. So if anybody that. out there, if you have any, you know, followers or, you know, patrons or subscribers that do that kind of thing, I am looking to make, a, you know, as many as anybody might want, because I'm going to try and <laughs> have one on my shelf. And then, and then, uh, we know a parking garage you could sell these at, too. Yeah, right? <laughs> you know, shooting, I, figure, you know? I figure that Gene's guy, can, you know, the guy who was, uh, who, who I guess it was a extra or uh, maybe he was a cameraman <laughs> or something. Was, oh, yeah. Uh, and the Mandalorian. Yeah, if he can go viral and people can talk about him, I figure we can make Max, you know, uh, a toy and see what yeah. happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, somebody somebody was was saying Max is my new favorite extra after um, the bikini monster. Yeah, I saw oh, that. I saw that. <laughs> That's hard to talk. When you see the bikini monster, Max, do you go, damn it? I mean, there's no way I'm getting number one now, right? Yeah. But you know, you, no you shoot for that now. strong number two, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> go for the silver. So so you didn't get to meet Robert Rodriguez at all? Or... No, so, man, there were so many times where, like, I felt like, because in that scenario, basically, like, I, again, uh, I go back to, like, I'm on a lot of shows, a lot of movies all the time. Um, I've, been on, I've been on TV and shows with, with Kevin Hart, with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Mark Wahlberg. Um, basically, what I'm, the point that I'm making is in those scenarios, you want it to be organic. You don't want to come up to him and be like, oh, I'm your biggest fan and, and you know, and, and, and salivate over him because, number one, they get that all every day, all the time. Uh, number two, it's just like we're there as professionals, you know. So he's almost, to some degree, like my peer, you know. Mm -hmm. He's like my coworker. So, like, I'm here working with him. So, you know, I don't – I you know, I want it to be organic. So, um, I you know, I, I, I can't say that I didn't try. I tried, you know, so there's there's a place called Crafty and Crafty is like where you get snacks, like when you take a break or like, you know, they have like all types of things like fruit roll ups, like hot sandwiches, like hot tea, coffee, the water, like that. so the water cooler. Yeah, they have water. They have water, yeah, they have water, yeah, they got all that stuff. So they have sodas. So everybody goes there, including like Robert Rodriguez and John Favreau. So like that's the place where like sometimes you kind of like just want to be a bee and hang out right there and just hope that like coincidentally they'll stop by to get something to drink or maybe to snack on. And then mm -hmm. as they're standing there, you just, Hey, I'm a, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. I've seen a lot of your work, you know, no salivating things, but, but just like, Hey, you know, I just wanted to let you know, I, I've admired you for a long time. I myself want to be just as big as you um, in, in, in an acting degree, you know? So I, I waited for that opportunity a lot in, in, sometimes I felt like I was so close, like this close, like he was right next to me, but, but then we had the mask and then like, he, it would just be for seconds. Like he'd come and be like, Oh, let me get this. But then, you know, he's the director. So he's very at a, at a very high, high uh, level of, of importance. Right. So he's just stopping in for like a second to get his coffee. And then he goes right back on the set. So I didn't want to stop him up for like even 30 seconds, which would seem very short for me, but a lifetime for the production, like even 30 seconds, I didn't want to stop him. But but yeah, yeah, just to see him and be there is just like, man, it just put a lot into my soul to to like let me know like, hey man, there are people that look like you. There are people that have come from where you've come from in, in Texas, you know, to make it in Hollywood and be at one of the biggest productions is one of the biggest franchises to ever exist mm -hmm. in the world and to be here. So like, you know, to every person that's ever thought that I was crazy for wanting to be an actor, like, this is what I have to say to them. I'm here with Robert Rodriguez, man. I'm on Star Wars. You know, like what? You know, that's, that's great, awesome. dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so you, I, you 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 came out like you came out. You said seven years ago from from Texas. Yeah, seven years ago, around 2014, like the end of 2014, like 2015 in time timeline, and I came out here 
And uh, I've been out here ever since. Yeah, man, I've been, you know, struggling, hustling, ups and downs, you know, a lot of auditions. Uh, I've, I've had three agents now. I'm on my first manager. Um, I actually just did my first national commercial. So, oh, you know, oh, that's, congratulations. that's a big thing for me. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I've joined SAG, which is, you know, the Screen Actors Guild, you know, so it's like to be a big actor, you have to join join those things and like to get auditions for like network TV. Um, so I'm it's sure a commercial. Maybe, the it's commercial is national- United States per- uh, Postal Service, United States Postal Service. So it's like a little Christmas holiday commercial. I'm part of like a family for like a, a quick glimpse of a second or two, you know, Was but- it- but did it just already pass or for next no, year? No, it's, 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 it's already airing. I could probably send it to you after this. Yeah, I'll send it okay, to you yeah. after this so you can check yeah. it out. Yeah. So, yeah, man, some of my bigger auditions um, that I've done are, I'm sure you guys heard of a show called Stranger Things. I've auditioned for that show. Never heard um, of it. What I'm, is that? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that one's huge. Yeah. Yeah, I've auditioned for Vita, which is another really popular, like, Latin show out here. Um, I've auditioned for, I've auditioned with Miles Teller before. You know, mm-hmm. Miles Teller, if you know this actor. So, yeah, mm-hmm. so, I've, so I've had a couple, a couple of accomplishments, you know, like, but I've also done did some, you, some of my short Did you ever tell like Miles, hey, Max, did you ever tell Miles, hey, did you ever think about calling it the Fantastic Five? Getting Max on yeah, board? Exactly. <laughs> right? yeah, exactly. I could yell to the Max when we all group, we do the right, thing, right? right? That's right, yeah, I could be, you know, you guys are missing me, man. Um, and now to and, and then he whiplashes Wars, you. Right. Yeah, and then he went like, great movie, by the way, great movie, a phenomenal movie, yes. Um, and then to be a part of, like, you know, um, to be a part of, 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 Di- of Disney Star Wars, you know, and, like, now, like, I kind of, like, I, I, if you go check out my Instagram, the, the last post that I posted was kind of, like, a spec for uh, Marvel's Werewolf by Night. So it's a character that is indigenous Mexican that I happen to be, and so many people have told me I look exactly spot on, like, a Check. carbon copy replica of the character. So I shot like a spec and I basically added uh, Kevin Feige and Marvel and like Disney. Uh, um, also, uh, it's I forget the name. The name's not coming to me right now. Sarah Finn, Sarah Finn Casting. So she's the mm-hmm. one that does all the casting for Star Wars and like Marvel. I added them and I just got a bunch of likes from all my friends and they passed it around Twitter and then Taboo came and commented on my post because he had a uh, hand in basically creating the the werewolf by night uh the comic book right now so he came and commented and said man this is really great brother i love this you know unfortunately i don't i don't own the intellectual property so i can't i don't really have that much of a say but this mm-hmm. is awesome you know like keep going with your journey so taboo from the black eyed peas he commented on my instagram and i was just like man oh my <laughs> god that is so cool uh, <laughs> yeah that's uh awesome. jedi chris says max what would your character name be D- did you get a name uh i didn't get a name so I, I would say i'm just a part of the towns people you know townspeople. i'm not sure yeah i didn't get a name on that one should max, we should max we to give him one or uh, i'm going with max to yeah max to <laughs> sounds like a great one yeah that's awesome yeah hashtag max to that's right yeah, i've, I've yeah. contemplated like max vega i don't know why but I, you know i was thinking about what i could put on the uh the, the tvc card so we're gonna we're gonna need some input from your audience or what you know some comments but i would love to know what you guys would want to name that background character uh, maybe it's the pulp fiction mm. influence that said vega. This, max the, yeah this this max and max is making me confused <laughs> oh max max brader there we go. Yeah, <laughs> if you're a beggar, you just get murdered yeah. on the shitter. You know, but, you know again, you're wearing the hat, so if they found you, found him on the shitter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Always. Uh, yeah. That's uh, right. Yeah. Let me let me let me see if there's anything in the in the old chat that that we missed to today because uh, I did really. see people mostly comment not don't ask questions but yeah once again what's your everybody's asking what's your character's name but yeah, yeah if none, if none what do you yeah that's epic and yeah everybody's just really happy for you which is good yeah. which is good yeah, the yeah, internet yeah. you know it could be it could be rude sometimes but yeah yeah today they're very nice for sure for sure <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, i i didn't want to tell you but it's it came out that Robert Rodriguez is actually in the bikini character the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> While you're sitting there, you're like, I just want to meet the dude. And, you know, he's just sitting yeah, there. Yeah, like, yeah, I just want to meet know. the dude. Yeah. He I called it chance. his good, it's his COVID containment, COVID containment yeah. unit. You can't get COVID yeah, in, that, yeah. in that costume, so. <laughs> no, the reason the reason I asked if you had met Robert Rodriguez is because I didn't know if, if like, he had introduced himself to, like, 
the cast and crew or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't oh, been, no, on, I mean, you know, well, yeah, no, no, no. So like the closest I'd get to him is like, I'd see him like right there on the set directing an actor. Um, he would come out from this place called video village and video village is where like the director and the producers, they sit and they can see everything on the screens. Basically they get like, um, sent from the camera wirelessly. So he would just come out from there and give direction. And then I would see him, le he, he, every day he'd show up to work in his Audi. He has like an Audi, a nice, nice little Audi. And I'd see him all the time. And like, I'd spot it every time. I was like, oh, there, that's Robert Rodriguez is coming. I'd see him come out of his car and just like, yeah, it was just like, it's, it's mystifying almost, you know? I mean, I wouldn't say starstruck, but I just say like, you know, again, somebody that I aspire so much and, and has inspired so much in me and, you know, I've grown up watching his movies. It's just like, man, he's like right there in front of me. And like, again, just, I can't help but to be nostalgic about the times with my cousin. And like, those just mean so much to me. So I, I'm very sentimental at times, um, as you can guess, because I'm an actor, so I get emotional. So, so yeah, so like, uh, just thinking about that would make me emotional. I'm just like, man, I'm here. Like, I, you know, I'm here regardless. Um, I've arrived in my cousin's book. Um, you know, regardless if, if to myself yet, I've still, I've arrived in Hollywood and, and, you know, the, I think the world at large is going to, is going to take my arrival at some point too. They're going to be like, wow, this kid, this kid's been doing it for a while. So yeah, yeah. I believe in you. I, be I believe in you. <laughs> I do too. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what? Um, when, when you were talking about, like, I was actually very surprised that you didn't know what role you were doing, like what, what set you were on or whatever, until you saw that script and it said Star Wars. I don't know about you guys, but I felt that, um, like, you know, like that gasp of like, oh shit, you know, if, yeah. if you were in that situation, I don't know if y'all felt that, like, as he was talking about it, like, I can imagine what that feeling must be like. Oh, you know? yeah, that, sure. that must have been, a, that must have been an, an electric moment. I mean, you're working with, with Robert Rodriguez and Star Wars. I mean, that's like two checkbox, yeah. two, two like yeah. bucket like list moments, in like in one. That's yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a question yeah. that 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 um that that keeps coming up, and that it like I've I've heard some things like around the um these productions before that like you know they'll have like four to eight directors or whatever six directors or whatever, uh -oh. and, and then yeah. they they will sometimes um they sometimes like a director will be will like like Steph Green is the director of the episode that you were on, right? So they so, have um so they yeah, have so they how call, does that like, work? Guest directors. They'll have guest directors. So like in TV and stuff like that, um, they have, they, I, I, I'm not exactly sure, like, this is exactly how it works, but they have guest directors that come in and, like, direct one episode, you know, kind of like you were saying earlier about Robert, or Roel was saying earlier about Robert Rodriguez directing an episode of The Mandalorian, yeah. right? So, like, they'll have guest directors come in, and I, I guess that's a way of, you know, keeping the directors working in Hollywood, but also, like, you know, getting some fresh eyes or somebody else, you know, an opportunity. So, they have guest directors and you know sometimes they will come in and direct the whole episode other times they'll come in and they'll just give feedback so they'll be there robert rodriguez is still there is the is the principal director um but you know they have they have the the guest director there so that's how that works yeah oh, okay interesting yeah yeah i, w I was wondering about that because i was like like you know you would you would just see like i, I always heard that if they like mixed it up a bit i just never yeah, knew, yeah, knew they to, mix it up. to what extent it see it seemed to you know it seemed to unfold in that way yeah yeah oh, that's cool yeah because because that, that that uh the uh, um the episode but before with all of the uh like tuscans and stuff was like super strong you know you're like or i mean yeah. i mean the uh, not the one yeah. before but the one with the tuscans so if you're like that's like yeah. that's like super strong stuff yeah and then you get to the bike stuff and everybody's like oh i'm gonna turn on this show right now and then everybody's like yeah. looking for who's responsible and it's just like no oh, you know <laughs> yeah yeah who's uh, it's kind of a <laughs> yeah, bigger yeah. thing than that you know <laughs> yeah no i definitely get it so yeah. did you did you get to like develop any type of friendships with any of the people on on set yeah, so actually, too, so one of my other friends plays one of the Tuscan Raiders. He actually just did a podcast himself. He he did an interview on a podcast. Um, shout out Rory Ross. Um, yeah, he he plays the Tuscan Raiders, and he's he's in the mask and basically does all this. Uh, he doesn't do the stunt work, but he does a lot of a lot of flicks there, and he's like in one of the main shots in the episode. And then um, I had another friend. Um, you know, I don't want to tell her entire story, but. She was actually yeah. given a line in 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 the Mandalorian, you know, in the in the Mandalorian. She was given a line, so she got a speaking line, and uh, it was just 
amazing to see that and be like, yo, you were like, you're cemented like in Star Wars. Like you actually have a line. She made it into the episode too. So yeah, I've made a lot of friends on on there. And then I had a lot of friends that I was already friends with because as you can imagine, you know, doing this work, you build a network of friends, you know, through all the years I've been doing it. So so yeah, I already had a lot of friends that were already on Star Wars. So they were friends with me, but then I made a lot of new ones as well. Nice. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. So it was just cool to see each other and like obviously see all the 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 fits the 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 costumes that we had. So you know we would constantly play around with the costumes and stuff. My costume, I think it constantly like they had to readjust mine because like I think they had like a velcro a velcro style like in one of my costumes because that that's not the only costume I was in the one that you that you see there. So hopefully later on in other episodes you'll see me. I was in another costume, but like my costume was like a I guess like a shower like a shower and it was like a Velcro and it would constantly like come apart because I would run or like do something. So wardrobe and makeup constantly had to come see me and they would like do all types of things. They would like staple it or they would like <laughs> try to put the Velcro back on or they'd be like, oh, we need to like glue it or something. Cause yeah. you know, again, these things are like so specific and like so many people are meticulous on these things. So like they don't, they, they want to make sure that it looks correct for the universe, you know? So a production like this, like, yeah, like these people are on it. 24 7 so not only are you, as even as a background um I, I wouldn't say you know not like the main actor but even as a background not only is the camera on you also the crew is on you their eyes are watching you because you know they want to make sure that your that your outfit looks right that your hair's right like everything looks perfect to this to this world right yeah if, if they have to keep fixing your hat max do you look at them and go I, I just wanted the braids it wasn't my idea yeah. and they're like you keep messing up the hat like yeah, when, yeah, when, when, when you when you when you're wearing like the uh, sh the uh, the uh, shawl thing, do you have the hat on in that in that version? No, is it the I same? Don't. I have, I have the hat okay, off. you have the yeah, braids. It's, it's the braids for that. They have got yeah. to show you with the braids. They yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. I I think I really think so. I think I was probably like one of like maybe two other people with braids, and like I guess you know <laughs> I don't want to call people out, but like. The like maybe the two other people with braids, theirs weren't as intricate as mine. So if I'm gonna try to show the camera here, my my braids are very intricate, intricate. Like the yes. style that I have is just like intricate. So their braids were just like maybe like remember when Anakin had his like one braid, like their one braid or like they amateur, have, like, a little amateur, yeah, yeah. Whereas my braids here. would be like my Look entire at, yeah. head. And then not only is it my entire head, it's like intricate details <laughs> as to like some stylist way, right yeah. now is yelling, no. Yeah, 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 exactly. No. Yeah. So, so I'm pretty yeah. sure I will be in some future episodes with my braids. And, and that means a lot to me too. Cause I'm like, Oh, look at my braids. Like I love my braids. Like I, I have a whole like love interest with my braids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, th those, those braids fit right in on, on, on Tatooine. Like th there's yeah. a character named, uh, Quinlan Voss, who they ended up like like making bigger and stuff like that, just based off of uh, actually background shot mm -hmm. from from the yeah. uh, Phantom Menace, and then they like built that yeah. built that all up and stuff, and it's like so yeah, show those braids, yeah. man, show those braids off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it just meant so much to me when I had like when when she was told me like don't ever come back without the braids because for me <laughs> it, being a part of Hollywood out here a lot of the times I feel that um you know sometimes these braids that I have, sometimes I feel, uh, you know, because the business, the way it works, like they can be stereotyped as like negative or like, you know, Hey, we, we, you know, like, Oh, this is, this is a lower societal character here because you've got braids or something. This is, so this like, is counterculture or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, or it's like, it's too urban or it's like, you know, a lot of the times, like, you know, some, you'll hear that from casting or whether it's a movie or a commercial and it's like, Oh, you know, like, we're not sure we're kind of scared of your braids or something it's like yeah so to hear star wars be like no we want your braids your braids are unique we like them that is something that is very unique and character driven to this world like keep those braids is it was just like you have to uh, be a real they'd have to be a real jerk though max to be like hey man i don't know about them braids but this rabbit otter in a bikini is totally fucking stuff <laughs> right right exactly, like, exactly, yeah. Yeah. like come on come on it's a big yeah. universe like, yeah yeah it's like, a big universe you know but again this is the universe where like so much is so unique and so like everything's you know almost everything's acceptable so it's like yeah we have all these different unique styles and inclusivity and diversity right so so that's why when they were like, oh, we want your braids. I was just like, man, that's that's awesome. Like, I want to keep my braids. I love my braids. So like, I'm constantly pushing 
for like with my braids, like I'm still the kid next door. I'm still the love interest. I'm still the kid that went to college, you know, you know, with braids, right? Like the characters that I would be given, like, oh, you don't have to put me as like a negative, you know, just because I have braids. So when they were telling me like the Star Wars and the braids are like perfect, man. And then the stylist would come and look at like, she would look at them and just be like, who does this? Like whoever does this has yeah, who a does really that? great, like, I, 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 uh, yeah, I have a stylist. I have a stylist. Uh, her name is Empress Shea on Instagram. If you look her up, E M P R E S S H A Y, I believe Empress Shea. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she does my braids in 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 Hollywood out here, and I've been trying to get her on a lot of sets lately so that she can do braids because there are a whole bunch of sets that look for the braids um, that that want braiders. But yeah, the stylist would come up to me um, and just they would she would just constantly be like, whoever does this is very gifted. And like very talented because I'm assuming you know she didn't know how to do the braids that unique you know so she's like wow your braids are like very intricate you know uh, how, how, long, how, how long did it did it did it take you for for your current braid setup uh, like like is that, is yeah, that like a long process is, no this this takes about an hour this takes about oh, an nice. hour yeah one hour so my hair if I do let it out it's like it's sh- it's shoulder length so I definitely have like this indigenous look it's like super super duper long um. I know you guys have seen me in some of my other movies where I had short hair, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. So it's just so like Max, my, my look is constantly changing. Yeah. Max, when they say don't come back without the braids, the very next day, you're just sitting in your car, you got your hash brown, you got your coffee, you listen to Smash Mouth, right? And yeah. then you pull right to the set, you're like, shit, the braids! And you got to pull right yeah. back around. <laughs> right, almost, almost An hour spot later. onto that. Like, almost spot <laughs> onto that because she's like, don't come, out without, don't come back without the braids. And like my next shooting day is like literally the next day. And the way this works is like you have to schedule an appointment. You know, um, you know, when, when you get your hair done, it's not something immediately. Like I had to tell Shay, like, hey, I need my braids. Like, you know, this this show that's very big, it means a lot, are pretty much commanding me to get my braids in. So like I need my braids right now. And to her, she kind of like she's just a braider, so she doesn't she doesn't know all about Hollywood. She knows Hollywood, but not like that. And she was like, well, let me see what I can do. And I'm like, no, I need them like ASAP. Like, does she go look? House. It's not like, Star Wars. Chill the fuck out. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna yeah, put exactly. theory or something? Like, yeah. <laughs> how important so, could it be? <laughs> right. So usually I go to her shop, but I think at this at this point in time, I was just like, just come over to my house. So she just came over to my house and she braided my hair like within an hour, and then like the very next day, I was on set with my braids and like. The, the, that head stylist noticed me. She was like, "Ah!" Oh. She was like, "Yeah, these are what I want right here." Like, these so are did awesome. they say? Did they say like, um, you can only have these braids in this show, and not you know what I mean? Like, you can't wear them. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, no, no. They, they didn't. They didn't limit my braids to anything. But but they were just like, we 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 really like your braids, and I would constantly change them too. So it was they oh. don't always look that same style, right? Got like. It. I have a lot of different styles and they're always like intricate. It's almost like, you know, mapping out my head. So like I would constantly change them and they would just be like, yeah, it just makes sense that like your character in this universe would get different, different style braids, you know, it's so hair, how, maybe a couple of days. How would you feel? Mm-hmm. Let's say that you're in a, a scene and your, yeah. your braids are very pr- prominent and yeah. then you see other people out on the street wearing the same braids because they saw your uh, braids. Yeah, that would that would be awesome. That would be awesome if I if I to know that I had that type of influence mm-hmm. and to know that that I you know that somebody was like you know what I'm gonna go get braids because I saw this character in Star Wars have braids and also so when Larry her, David shows up with with braids yeah. next season to Curb we know <laughs> I know Larry yeah. David we're both jealous we we're all jealous <laughs> yeah. 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 Brache, no work from us. Larry, yeah. Are you afraid <laughs> that if, with some with some braids? Yeah. I'm not saying you, but do you think like you think in, in a similar situation, someone might be afraid to let them know about their stylists because then they won't hire them anymore. They're like, oh, if they get the braid person, then I'm never gonna be on set. Like, like everybody's getting like, the braids. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, oh wait, I'd be wait, the only wait, one with say- these. What's the question? Like, again? You, you know, when someone says, who who did this thing that we hired you for the most, right? Yeah. Are you afraid? Like, not, I mean, I, not you obviously been doing it long enough, but do you, do you think like a, a younger, a younger actor would be like, oh, if I tell them, then they won't have me on set. They'll just have the person who can do all the work, right? Who can just set up. No, all no, no, no. I absolutely yeah. not. I would want somebody to have that opportunity to have the braids. I think that, yeah, I think my style 
my braid is yeah. me wearing the braids is unique. I don't, like, I guess they don't see somebody like me every day rocking the braids and just like, bro, you're, you're never going to be like, a producer, you know, Max. You know, not yeah. with that attitude. You know, not with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you yeah, want? Yeah, nice. I, should, I should hide it and be like, no, it's just me, only me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah. Me to the max. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. The the uh uh because because of rob people are saying smash mouth star wars satan shows up saying smash mouth don't put don't put smash mouth on anybody that, especially a guest rob come on yeah uh, i but, got my hash browns and i'm on my way to set I can't somebody says I'm, I'm i'm gonna go i'm going to be rewinding every scene looking for the braids now somebody says. You, does yeah. emperor go does emperor go you, know, you better be fighting a wookie or some shit and you're like oh, i can't even say that like shut oh, up like yeah someone yeah. Asked about, guess it. <laughs> someone asked about um you seen did you see black chrysanthemum <laughs> yeah yeah i did yeah i did see him yep Mm -hmm. That was really hard for me to keep under wraps too, because like I, you know, a lot of stuff of what y'all are seeing now and like what you will see in the future, I saw firsthand right there, like on the set. So like, it's really hard for me to keep my mouth quiet and not tell my cousin things, but also like no spoilers ever. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to give them spoilers, but I'm also just, I just can't, I can't say anything at all, period. Yeah. But it's like, man. man, I know what you're going to see in the future. You know, what did, <laughs> like I know. What did you do when you saw, when you saw him? Um, I was just like I was so intimidated because he's huge. Like the, the the actor that actually plays him is like six five, so like he's huge. So he's just colossal. So he's just overwhelming. So it's just and then to be in that Wookie costume is almost like you know a monster. And it's just like wow, like he's big, big. You know, oh. so I'm only five seven. You know, I'm I five, thought he was. Seven, I thought he was a real character. I thought it was real. He was real. <laughs> yeah, the Wookie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's, an, there's an actor in those costumes, and those costumes really? are so hot. Yeah, so like they have their own personal assistants with fans. They have their own personal assistants with fans, and like they they basically blow into the mask and stuff, so they can like keep them ventilated because yeah. it's so hot, as you can imagine. Like that all happened like during like the sun is blazing on them. They're in this whole suit, and it's just as soon as they take that mask off, they're just dripping in in, in sweat. Yeah, were yeah. you hot? Dripping too? in sweat. Um, yeah, I would get hot sometimes because I, I was wearing layers, but you know, nothing I couldn't handle. And of course my, 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 uh, my head wasn't covered by a helmet. So like, you know, all the, you know, the Tuscan Raiders and like Black Hassan, you know, they're, they're, they're just covered up by their, their mask. And it's just like, man, they need breaks. So like every, after ever so many shots, the director would be like, all right, we need a break for our, for our characters. They need to get some air, you know? Yeah. What, one day I was, I was down there for, for when they were filming Mando. And uh, yeah. there, there was there was a there was a an alien laying down on the ground. And as as I went up there, I looked down and I see him. I'm like, whoa! I'm like, I wonder if that's like a dead person. And I'm yeah. like looking at or you know like like a, like a like a like a dead body, like a fake dead body or something. I mean, the mask yeah. is on. I'm like looking at it, and all of a sudden it gets up. It scared the shit out of me. I was like, what? It's like a zombie getting up all of a sudden. <laughs> but that poor yeah. person was just like, <laughs> you know, just yeah. like <laughs> like having a heart. It was hot that day. I was like. Man, right that, is, that person's yeah. dedicated <laughs> yeah so the, the costumes definitely get hot i think at some point like you know when we take a break from shooting for like uh 30 minutes or something like that i take off the layers i take them off and then of course wardrobe comes back and sees me and they're like why did you take it off we got to put it back on and it was like you know they weren't upset they were just like you know like oh you took it off and i'm like yeah because it gets hot and then like sometimes to like go to the bathroom i have to take off the the i have to take off the wardrobe so they would have to basically come in out and put like the fit back on me the outfit on me and i was how, like it was just so hot man i just couldn't walk around how many days were you on star wars uh, probably about like 15 days 15 yeah days? 15 days yeah, yeah. uh that's yeah. that's yeah that's that's quite a bit of time down there yeah yeah quite, yep and then and then did you did you did you show up at that lot or did you did you have did, were you bust over in those buses so we get so we, we we drive our cars and then we drive our cars to like a studio and then we park there at the studio and then we go into a stage and that stage basically has all our wardrobe it has makeup um and these are like hundreds of people hundreds yeah. of people so like you can imagine it's almost like it's a whole village of people just getting ready to go shoot this one thing but like in the process it's just back and forth a ton of people people have headsets in they're like oh we need this person we need that person like you know you check in basically 
you get what's called a voucher and a voucher is basically like your pay stub and like has your name on it and stuff like that. And then you go see wardrobe, wardrobe puts you in your whole outfit that takes 30 minutes. Then you go to makeup that takes another 30 minutes. You know, they just make sure that you, that you have like some dirt on you or you look appropriate. You don't look too clean for, you know, that, that town that we're in. And then you go to hair, hair looks at you. For me, it was very easy. They were just like, yeah, you're good. Yeah. Um, yeah, fine. So, and then from there, they put us in these black robes. And then once they put us in these black robes, they put us on shuttles and they shuttle us to the actual like stages. Yeah. I, 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 I think Max should be getting a, a braid voucher for paying for the, for, to get the yeah. braids done. I yeah, mean, they're, they're exactly. just getting a freebie <laughs> there. Come on, Star Wars. Yeah. They actually, <laughs> so like, funny enough that you said that I was on a production where like, it was like a period piece, like in the seventies. Um, and they, they, they wanted me to take my braids out because they liked my long, long hair. And I was like, man, I don't really want to take my braids out. And they were like, please, will you take them out? And I was like, man, all right, for you guys, because you guys have done, it been so nice to me. And I've been, I've worked on this production maybe like, uh, like maybe 10 or 15 times. I'll take my braids out. So I took my braids out. Yeah. Um, they shot, it was also for a, uh, it was for a Paul Thomas Anderson movie. So we shot for a Paul Thomas Anderson movie and uh, it was like a seventies piece. And they put me in the, in like in, in, in the, in the scenes where like I'm on the camera and I have long hair cause it's like super long hair. So it looks like 70 style. And then at the very end of the day, they were like, you know what, how much did it cost you to get those braids? And I was like, Oh, it cost me this much. And they're like, we're going to reimburse you on top of your pay. Yeah. Like, there we go. And they're like, Paul yeah, Thomas they're Anderson. Like, yeah. A fair yeah. production. No, no yeah, no, that's I'm right. Kidding. I'm not, like, not trying to get yeah, you in trouble with Star Wars, not, but I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and then the yeah. Star Wars, yeah. if they get like, uh, they get one of those uh, Emmys or Oscars for the, for the, for the break, so they take the credit. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 For exactly, Nigel Phelps' yeah. art on Batman. Like, yes, and hair. first shows up, takes all the credit for the hair, and is like, I did it. Yeah. I did it all myself. How long do you, how long do you keep your braids in? Um, I usually keep them in for like uh two weeks, like two weeks to like a month, you know. Because I had I had um cornrows um a while back. Yeah. yeah, it only lasted two days because they started to unravel and my head was yeah. itchy. Yeah, uh, yeah, you got to make sure that you wear something to keep them tight. And you like when they braid mine, they braid them with moisturizing gel, so like they stay like moisturized. Mm-hmm. And then when I take a shower, I wear a shower cap. And then when I sleep, I wear something to keep them tight. You know. See, but the thing, like I was. Because it was itching, like my scalp, and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I, I, feel you. And I yeah, have yeah, oily, yeah. I have oily scalp, so like, yeah. I, it, I couldn't. I feel they started unraveling yeah, yeah. on the throne, and I just, I just let them go. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if anybody's trying to trying to get braids to get in Star Wars, take Max's work. It ain't gonna work. Your head's gonna get itchy. It's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, you don't exactly. got the skills. I'm it's the only one. Thing. I'm the unique character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait till you play a Wookiee, Max. It gets a little hot and itchy <laughs> in there too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, J- James, yeah. James is asking, and obviously, don't get yourself in trouble. But did you see things that you talk that you can't talk about yet? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enough said on that. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <I was> like, <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Yeah. <laughs> My lawyer on the call right now. Yeah. yeah. I can't say anymore. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't say anything. But uh, yeah. yeah, central suing. You know, what I, mean? yeah. I, I. What was your reaction seeing BK? What were you thinking while being filmed for the first time in Star Wars? Was it hard to keep your composure? I would have lost my shit as a fan. Yeah. On a side note, I heard of a, a couple of friends who were featured, uh, had featured extra parts in uh, the Force Awakens, and mm-hmm. when Han Solo and Princess Leia are there people start getting a bit teary eyed, mm. but some yeah. people couldn't stop getting teary eyed and lost, had to get removed, had to be like, uh, and then they're not in yeah. it. They're not in it. Cause they yeah, could not so, get, get it composed. Yeah. I definitely think that there were back around there like that. Um, they definitely, you know, but that's a part of like central casting. So central mm-hmm. casting, they tell you that from the first day that they, that they hire you it's basically like listen this is a job you're gonna obviously see people that you see on tv you're gonna see people that that their personas mean so much to you but it's very it's it's very important that you keep your composure that you that you act professional this is a job so the minute that you don't do that you know we will we'll kind of have to remove you or something so like i said i've been on a lot of huge movies and shows but you know what's what's been able to help me keep my composure i am a big fan um I, uh, I would definitely lose it. I feel like if I ever saw Denzel, Denzel's like one of my acting peers, 
But um, what's helped me keep my, keep my composure throughout this whole time is just like, I've seen myself as one of them. I just have yet to get my opportunity, but I also see them as a coworker. So it's like, I don't want to be like, oh my God. So, but, but yeah, being on Star Wars, seeing Black Crescenten is definitely like, you know, something huge for me, you know, it's like, oh, this is huge. Like I'm, you know, like to think about my cousin, to think about my family, to think about how I relate and how Star Wars transcends in so many ways in my life. It, it meant so much to me to be there, but it was just like, hey man, but you got to keep your composure. And then to see Robert Rodriguez, John Favreau, to see all these things that just like recanting them now is just like, you know, it's hard for me to keep my composure here. And it's just like, but keep your composure, man. Like you too, um, you too will be in that position too, uh, eventually, you know, I think, you know, I, I imagine myself, uh, my ego imagines myself that one day I'll be in a position where the backgrounds are going to be looking at me and be like, that's Maximiliano Garcia. That is, that's holy shit. I can't believe I'm in front of him right now. And like, this actor is huge. Like he's inspired me. So I imagine that. And that's what helps me to like, keep my composure. Like, yeah, it's cool, man. I, mean, yeah. honest, I was able to keep my composure. So if I can keep my composure with Madonna, I can keep my composure with anybody. Right. Yeah. There you uh, go. Uh, yeah. oh, oh, over the uh, summer, I I ran into uh, Ewan McGregor when he was filming Obi Wan when I was down there checking stuff out and and uh, brag, 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 brag. I no, no, I did not keep my composure. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I think back on it, I'm just like, yeah, man. <laughs> so no, I, I, I did you make PP? A little bit. <laughs> a little, little, little bit of pee-pee, but uh, and and Max, it was piddle. It was piddle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm peeing myself. Yeah. I got a little dick. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but no. Th thank you, thank you for for coming today and and for sharing absolutely, the exp absolutely. your experience with us. I mean, I'm so happy for you, dude. Like, I think yeah, that's just so sure. rad. I think it's awesome, and. uh I'm going. I'm going to spruce up this version of the video with the right featured image and all that stuff. And yeah. I will. I will in the in the um, description. I'm going to add some links to, to to some of your 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 um like to the shorts that me and Max watch and stuff like that. They're 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 yeah. they're good. And uh, if it, so if anybody wants to check out more of Max, you could you could go ahead and just look into the, the description here, and I'm, I'll do that this afternoon. Yeah, it'll cool. be it'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I and, appreciate y'all for having me on. Thank you so much. Yeah. You, and congratulations sure. again. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Raul, for, 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 for showing up. Roll for, for 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 showing up and and bringing your cousin and 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 <laughs> for being so nice. Because cousin Steven, I have my cousin Steven watches the show, and it's cousin Steven. If you ever get in Star Wars and you don't tell me, man, I'm gonna love and hate you at the same time, dude. I'm just saying, he's way nicer than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, what we'll, we'll be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, talking about all of the day Star Wars news. And uh, Max, you ever want to come back? Bro, if you ever want to, want to come back, just hang out anything. and talk Star Wars. Open yeah. invite anytime. Yeah. Love, love, love to have you guys on. Absolutely, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you guys stay. Thank you so much for having me on here. It was, it was my pleasure. You guys stay safe out there. Um, make sure to look out for me in some episodes, you know, and may the force be with you. And cast, cast him. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Bye. It's not about spaceships. It's not about spaceships. Okay, good. Job. Yay. We did it. All right. Dude, thanks so much again for, 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 for coming on, dude. I, I do really 